Hi everyone, it's Matt Bentley Walls here. Um, it's a bit of a an overcast, cold day. Um, this is coming um, at the end of April, um, when the weather should be a little bit better. Um, but hey, I just thought uh, maybe do a vlog, um, and it's a vlog that I've been meaning to do for a while, um, but I've just held off for a while because. It's quite a complex thing, I think. Um, the, the whole notion, the argument of digital, digital versus film. Um, I should apologise in advance. The production value is is um, uh, well non-existent. Um, hopefully, the content will make up for that, um, and. You'd be the judge of that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, this is just all in one take. No kind of edited, you know, chopping and changing. Um, so, yeah. Digital versus analogue or film. Um, I use both. I'll say that right from the start. Just, you know, hand up. I'm not one of these people that kind of, oh, I only shoot film, I only shoot digital. That in itself is quite an interesting thing to me. Um, you know, for me, it's like, well, I guess in a perfect world, film is my thing. Um, and I say that not because, you know, I'm a little bit in danger of, you know, I'm 55, so I was weaned on film. Um, I'm not saying that because I'm old school, but hopefully this vlog will develop some of those ideas and throw out some thoughts, not so much statements, but thoughts. Um, you know, but hey, digital, obviously, you know, it's ubiquitous, it's just everywhere and applied to everything these days. Um, and it has its inherent benefits and attributes and it's it's amazing in so many ways um in so many ways you could almost think well you know why does anybody shoot film why would anybody still shoot film and that kind of got me thinking and it was like well i keep on coming back to film i keep not coming back but i i still keep on using it um and and i'm sort of wondering why um, is it just something that, oh, well, that's what I was brought up with, so it feels familiar? And I kind of thought, no, it's not. It's a lot more hassle in many ways. It's possibly more expensive. I mean, it's more expensive in the sense that you have to fork out for film and processing. Less than that if you do it yourself. Um, even then, you, you've got to fork out for the developing tank and the chemicals and thermometers and all that kind of stuff, which I do do. Um, I've been doing for a long time now. And so, you know, there is, an, there is seemingly more expense and more hassle. So why, you know, why not just bite the bullet, you know, sell my analog camera and, um, and commit, commit to digital, you know? Instant images, um, you know, you can shoot forever, um, you know, you're not limited by 36 exposures or your ISO, um, you know, you can shoot in the dark with a digital camera practically these days. Um, and that's what sort of, that's what started me thinking. And one of the thoughts I have, or I I have when I shoot a digital image, and I really like the image, one of the thoughts I have is that when I've shot something that I'm really, really pleased with, it's past the six-month test, do I still like it after six months, and all this kind of stuff, that criterion that you lay down, your own criterion, whatever that might be, I've got an image, it's full frame, you know, everything, everything's just so on it. 
I began to realize that when I've got a great image on a digital file, I kept on thinking, I wish, I wish I'd shot this on film. And yet when I shoot, when I get a corker, you know, one of those rare moment diamonds, I call them, you know, um, on film, I'm, I never ever once think, I wish I'd shot this on digital. I wish this was a digital image. And I kind of thought, you know, why, why is that there? I don't always process what I think, but I have these, this feeling and I'm kind of stuck with it for a while. And it, you know, it, it swirls round and it, you know, and then you begin to notice some things or pay attention to some things perhaps. And what I was realizing was I kind of went head first into digital when it arrived. Sorry, not not head first when it arrived, but I waited for a while until it I thought it was up to speed. And then I kind of went head first into it with a with a an M9. Beautiful, beautiful sensor. Um Alex Webb, I think, uses the M9. Just astonishing kind of colour palette, I suppose. Not that I shoot colour, but you know, that's what it would be initially. And and I you know, I was thinking, my God, you know, this this, this sensor is so amazing. Maybe it maybe you know, maybe I'll become a colour <laughs> a colour photographer or something. You know, it was that it was that good. Um but anyway, I went head first into it and um got some astonishing shots with it. Um beautiful camera, I mean in many ways, limited also. Um, useless ISO, but that in itself was good because although I, th I think its maximum was a 10,000 ISO, you could actually only go up to about 1600. I don't think I went, I did go above 1600, but I don't, I, you know, worked out that it wasn't much use over 1600 ISO. Um, you know, it just pixelated really horribly and anything over that um you, know, you could get an image but it just wasn't pleasant but anyway I, you know there i was really going for it and embracing it i suppose and not having any hang-ups about it um enjoying it really enjoying it and i started to accrue a lot of files a lot of files, a lot of files. And coming from film, I have never gotten rid of a a roll of film in my life. I've never lost... Well, I, I mean, by virtue of the fact that you cut it down to strips of six, usually speaking. I mean, that's what I do anyway. So you have six sixes, um, six strips of six images. If there's a great image on one strip, you can't get rid of the other five because you need the you need the strip to either go into the enlarger tray or or the scanner. Um, but I wouldn't throw away the other 30 images. I would keep them there in the sheet so that the visual is there. You know, you can see if there's an empty sleeve, an empty compartment in the in the um, in the neg holder, in the the paper neg holder. Um, so you know, I'm not I'm not one of these people that just throws stuff out, but I began to realise that I had to with digital because you just shoot so much more. You can't help it. It's like, um, you know, not that you go crazy. Well, you know, I didn't go particularly crazy. I just realised that hey, I'm not limited to thirty six, and you know. But then what happened is that I you know I, I got lacy hard drive ex, you know external hard drives, and I was backing doubling back up and tripling back up and these things were filling up and it was actually getting quite expensive to store this stuff and then a bit further down the line as I was trying to transfer over or you know move my DNG files my raw files I was beginning to realize that 
in actual fact, you know, apart from the expense, it's really tricky to make sure you've done all that. And then you get an update on your desktop and and then that hard drive wasn't compatible with the with the external and with the external hard drive and so on and so forth. You know, I was using these, I was using Lacey, you know. And it be it became a real sort of headache. Um and then what I started to realise is that I'm losing images here. I'm actually losing images. I'm I'm losing some really good images. You know, not spectacularly, but I was losing some good images. Um you know, very difficult to, to you know, obviously to remember what number they were, so to locate locate them in the first place. You have far higher volume of images um, you know and I'm not being mean when I say I don't throw images out like you know with film you know you keep the strip and and the complete film but you know what you like immediately isn't always what you like in six months and other images that you've put aside you suddenly realize actually they were really good or I didn't quite see the reflection there that I didn't look well enough initially and hey I actually really like this now or I prefer this or that that's grown on me and so, and so I'm very very careful about not throwing stuff out which means the volume is you know apart from obvious mistakes which you know I can't make that many of you know I kind of know what I'm shooting and hey you know 35 years I should know what I'm gonna get you know I don't chimp if it's digital I, I never chimp it's like I know what I'm getting well I, you know I should know what I'm getting you know I'm not starting out here I'm you know um but there's always that element when you sort of are viewing back your images that ah oh, you didn't see that at the time your subconscious was you know was coming into play and you you know, everything's just so split second. You can't see everything. Anybody that says they do is, you know, telling porkies as far as I'm concerned. Um, so you you discover things that you hadn't actually seen in that image. And it's so, you know, you've got to be so careful when you throw stuff out, if you throw stuff out. And I tend, you know, to err on, err on the side of caution, I suppose. Um, and so that volume was would build up, you know, and I, I real, in 35 years, I have never lost, you know, I developed the film, I've never lost one, ever. Not once. I've never lost a strip, because there's just that visual, there's an empty thing there, where's the strip? Oh, it's still in the neck tray, or it's still in the, uh, the scanner. You know, you've got a visual, a very clear, obvious visual reminder. Um, and it made, you know, it's started to make me think, hey, you know, is there, is there, a, is there, is there a way around this? Am I, you know, you can send stuff up to the cloud, obviously, but then, you know, again, it's like, what's up there? What isn't up there? Did I, you know, I was using my desktop that time, my laptop that time. Okay, you know, as long as things are configured, it should be okay. But it's just so much easier to mislay. So much easier. And as I say, 35 years of photography, never lost a single image. And you, I mean... I'll give you an example. A month ago, I stumbled on some 5.4 images that I took at college. Just, you know, advertising crap. Um, and I thought, I'm just, hey, wow. I'm just going to scan that, see how it comes out. It was absolutely perfect. You know, as pristine as the day it was shot. Literally. Other than a bit of dust that, you know, you can't avoid. Um... The, 
you know, so long as you store your negatives, so long as you store your film, you know, I'm coming from street photography, everything I say is street photography, reportage based context. Um, so long as you store, you know, you don't store them in the cellar, you know, you keep them out of the heat and you keep them out of the cold, make sure they're dry, keep them at a reasonable temperature. You know, I just have plastic boxes with lids on that snap tight. Um, it keeps the air off and they're, they're all as good as, you know, maybe one or two have developed a couple of scratches, you know, very, very hair minor scratches. But again, you can, you can retouch that or you can do that in, you know, by hand in the print or, or, or in Photoshop or Lightroom. But other than that, they're, they're still amazing. And so, you know, this is not an argument of, oh, use film. I'm not trying to convince anybody to use anything. You use exactly what you want, whatever floats your boat. It's just thoughts, throwing stuff out. Like, it's almost as, you know, I'm like hypothetically, if somebody said, okay, you, you can only choose one or one of them is gonna go extinct tomorrow, which one would you save? I know that's ridiculous. Well, it's not that ridiculous. I mean, film nearly became obsolete, didn't it? So it's not it's not that ridiculous at all. Um, and I, I can give you another example of uh, I have a friend who works in a lab, and I was chatting to him one day when he was at work at, at the lab, and he was dealing with. I mean, bucket loads of 120 film. And I said, is that for one client? And he said, yeah. I said, my God, well, you know, what are they shooting? <laughs> How come so much? You know, you are you having to print all that as well? And or contact sheets or what? He said, no, just contact them. No prints. And I said, who shoots that much film? I mean, my God, you know, that must be a, a, you know, that's a good client, isn't it? And he said, oh, the university. And I said, the university, really? My God, I'd have thought that had been digital all day long. He said, they were. He said, but they kept losing files or they were updating their computers and things were going out of date and they were losing files, you know, left, right and centre. Now, you know, I'm just dealing with me and what I shoot. So there's less chance of it happening, but it started to happen. And it still does happen. And I hate that feeling of, you know, you only get one image once in a blue moon, a really, you know, what I, you know, a corker every once in a while. On film, it's just there. You're not dealing with zeros and ones. And, you know, a digital file. You you have a tangible thing that also doubles up as a digital file so you have both you have the physical and you have the digital so you know it's the best of both worlds and look i mean <clears throat> you know sometimes you're shooting for people and they want it yesterday that's fine that's cool and you're shooting stuff that you know you're excited to shoot but it's not what you do it's not street or it's not so yeah, it makes sense. Digital absolutely makes sense in that in that sense. I, I don't see how you can get by in this day and age without digital. It is, you know, it's that amazing. It's you know, but I, that's I'm just sort of also I have to be a little bit careful here. Also, so. A full frame sensor, 35mm full frame sensor, as a Leica or many other cameras have these days, you know, 24 megapixels, 40 megapixels and, and the like. And you go, yeah, okay, fantastic. You know, you can blow that up. And people say, well, yeah, but you can't really do that with a 35mm neg image because, you know, to which I say absolute rubbish. I mean, <clears throat> it's, I think it's better than digital. You know, 
once you hit a size with digital, it starts to pixelate, you know, and pixels are, I don't know, <laughs> the aesthetic of pixels is not nice. I don't know a single person that, that would say that they like that. Whereas with film, I mean, what I do typically is I'll wait two years over which time I might have 12, I'm trying to think now, <laughs> 12, 10, 15 images maybe that, that, are, that hit the mark, you know, absolutely hit the mark, or I think hit the mark, you know, they're, they're, they're real contenders for, you know, they're images that I'm really proud of, let's say. And then what I do, I collect them, I put them into one or two neg bags, and I, I get them scanned on a Hasselblad FlexTite scanner, an X, X5, I they did two. But up and down the country, normally, you know, they've definitely got them in London, Birmingham, various places. I think you can send them off, you know, if you're brave enough to do that. Um, to various places, but they're flat scans. So you, it takes the curvature out of the negative and you get this phenomenal, I don't know, you know, 8,000 DPI. I, I mean, it's just, everything in that negative is, you know, or positive, if you shoot positive, everything is extracted with this scanner everything to such a high quality you know you 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 use a flatbed and then you compare it to a flex tight Hasselblad flex tight scanner and my god it's like a, another image it's like really wow it's and these things will blow up to I mean the files are huge so you know you can only do so many um and obviously you're being paid, you're being charged by the, you know, by the image. Um, and prices will vary, obviously. Um, but they're phenomenal. And you can blow those up to the wall, the size of the wall behind me. Plus, you see, you see film grain. You know, I shoot largely with film, you know, 45, but 45, 400 ISO, uh, low light, I should always shoot HP5. Sunny conditions, always try X. And that's just my thing. I'll push, I'll push the HP5 beautifully. It just works fantastically with my little concoction of chemicals. Um, very, very, I get very, very fine grain with that, even though I've pushed it and then I'm bringing it back in the de development. And then once it goes into that, into that Hasselblad flex type scanner, I mean, you know, maybe I'm not sure if they make them anymore. I'm not sure if they've got equivalents out, but the, the lens they use in that scanner, the fact that the, the negative, you know, if you look at any negative as a curvature, it just flattens it. So you get everything pin sharp and, and you just do it with, with your best images, I guess. And you know, that will look infinitely better and blow up much, much larger, I think, than a than a digital image. Um, and when it goes past the point, it, you won't see the pixels, you'll see grain, which to me is aesthetically beautiful. It's, 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 it's more interesting. It's, it's, it's far nicer to look at, you know, it's one of the things, one of the reasons why I, I bought my first camera, you know, black and white silver halide. It was like, wow, just, I don't know, <laughs> something else for me. So I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, to balance it out a little bit, you know, we all know the, you know, the, the qualities of digital, the advantages of digital. It's, um, it's a, 
it's a beautiful thing. Uh, a limitless roll of film, you know. Um, you don't have to have three, four rolls of film on you. Um, the ISO, you know, shooting in the dark, fantastic. Um, and it's instant. Um, I could say it's, you know, it's bloody sharp. You know, I'm kind of... <laughs> I think it works better in colour. As soon as you desaturate colour, it almost looks, I don't know, black and white images I always think look a bit too creamy or something, too soulless or sanitised or something in digital. I mean, look, that's just, that. it's not even worth talking about that because that's just in the eye of the beholder. It's a completely subjective thing. Um, but, you know, you can't help but think, wow, you know, they have made 35 mil images almost look like medium format or or, or, or 5.4 images it's it's that sharp it's that sort of blemishless um you know i have a slight problem with that i don't i just i don't know why it's sort of it doesn't quite look like 5.4 or, or medium format i mean it does but there's just something a little bit too creamy about it too perfect too but anyway yeah that's just that's just me um so i guess what i'm saying is that you know if somebody did say to me look you have to choose which is a ridiculous thing but but hypothetically you have to choose one is going obsolete tomorrow i would choose film without a shadow of a doubt without a hesitation i would choose film every single time let's I also think there's something gorgeous about getting, you know, not being slow, but not shooting so much and putting it through, you know, making sure the chemicals are all just the right temperature and everything's timed, every, everything's synchronized. And then you, you just have, you know, it comes out, you've washed it, you've got everything right, you know it's not going to... Um, you know, you haven't rushed anything. You know, you do that with a fixer or whatever. It's, hey, you can't take shortcuts. So something lovely, you're almost, it's like a craft. It's almost like making a beautiful piece of furniture. Um, pr probably not a great analogy, but it's it's not instant. Boom, you know. The, uh, uh. There's nothing wrong with instant, is there? Instant is amazing, but it's a little bit like, you know, autofocus, auto everything. I want to decide. I want to decide if, you know, how much depth of field there is to that image. I don't want the camera dictating. Even though it might do a really good job, I want to know at the time of shooting, that's what I decided. Bang. And I, you know, I live and die by that decision i i if i get it wrong that's down to me but i want to be involved i i i love that sort of process that getting it right process you know and when you get it right wow you know it's an it's a beautiful thing it's a it's an amazing thing um so i guess you know that's me it's just sort of throwing ideas out i mean leave some comments let me know, you know, I, I'm still, I am decided, I am categorically decided, but I keep an open mind because, you know, that's as far as I see it in my, in my mind, that's, that's, yeah, that's what works for me, but, you know, I still really like digital. <laughs> I am not from the camp of oh I only shoot sometimes I haven't got a roll of film Some, sometimes I can't even afford a roll of film so digital is amazing you know? <laughs> you know the best camera is the camera you've got with you or that you can use um, so you know it's not like you know only shoot film only shoot digital no you know I, that's just a completely 
absurd argument in my opinion it's not a legitimate argument in any in any way i mean other than if that's what you want to do that's cool you know um but for me i you know i think i need both it's kind of like saying well i'm going to use the telephone from now on i'm never going to email well really um well, it's fine you know whatever um i can't conceive of that you know there are times when i don't want to call somebody i don't want to have a conversation with them i just want to relay some information um and email suits that purpose perfectly um so yeah you know i'm still grappling with it i'm still even though i'm you know at this moment in time you know it's film for me is absolutely you know in a perfect world when i've got some film when i can afford some film <laughs> Film is is the thing. Film is absolutely one hundred percent. You know, would be my choice if I had to give one up. Um, but you know, I'm interested to see what other people think as well, and um, whether I've not considered certain things, and you know, all that kind of thing. It's just information, isn't it? It's throwing stuff out there, learning, keeping an open mind. You know, hopefully. We, We'll never be in that situation. Hopefully, you know, we'll be lucky and we have the benefit of both. And there's no need to decide on one or the other. Um, but it's, that's not really what I'm debating or, you know, throwing thoughts out about. I'm, I'm, you know, at the moment when I'm doing my stuff, I reach for the, I reach for a roll of film, not the digital camera. Um, And it seems to work. That seems to work for me. And so why am I even having this conversation? Um, it, you don't have to decide one or the other, hopefully. But it's just, you know, it's just understanding all the dynamics of it and processing, pardon the pun, um, processing, you know, do's and don'ts, pros and cons, and, and all that kind of stuff. I just find it quite interesting um, because having, as I said, having gone headfirst into digital, I now, you know, having played with it, if you like, you know, I now find myself or, you know, have done for the last, you know, five years, really, um, understood that film is really my, you know, my thing. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I, Overall, that's what I favour. Um, I think that's probably the best way of saying it. Um, so, yeah. Waffled on long enough. And if I've made a few mistakes, forgive me. As I say, this is just one take. Um, I did make a bit of a blunder on my last vlog, or the vlog before last, uh, when I was talking about why Leica. And I said, I really like contrasty lenses. I meant images. So if anyone pick me up on that, apologies. But um, I think most of you will get the gist. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that was interesting. And hopefully see you for the next one. Cheers for now.